Hello, Internet. It is I, Dave Foreman, also known as Manorette Matoran, and today we are doing something totally new. We're doing a podcast, and I have with me today on this podcast Ayo Okinen and, and Ben Kazi. Hey. Um, and today's episode, we are going to discuss barriers. And what I mean by that is things that we do as mockers and artists in general it can apply to all kinds of art um but more specifically mocking where things we we put mental barriers up in our brain that keep us from maybe building certain ways or trying new ideas or it can sometimes just lock us into a room that becomes very difficult to get out of and we all have them Everybody, I don't care what level of mocker you are, everybody's had to overcome some mental barriers to become a better mocker. And that's what we're going to discuss today on our podcast. So the first question is, what do you consider a barrier barrier in terms of mocking or the mocking community? Well, if I begin here, I think the main barrier isn't about uh, using new ideas. It's more like using old ideas and uh, making in a way the same mock all over again because I think most people have certain themes and, and sort of character models that are very similar and, and they just enjoy altering the same main prey maybe or, or some main structure all over again and at least at some point I felt that two people get bored when uh, my creations have so much to do with each other when they are similar team or have very similar structure will they complain that hey we've seen that leg before <laughs> on another model but really that never happened so um, I think maybe three years ago or something I just began to tell that I'll build whatever I like because yeah. this is just Lego bits and and I combinate them and I post them internet and it's it's not really serious, it's not away from anybody <laughs> if I post stuff and, and more I do the, the better really because even if everything I do isn't super innov- innovative or, or new and and super special, it's, it's not really a problem because I don't owe every, anyone to build new stuff and, and if I do what I like I, I enjoy it and, and it keeps me inspiring and of course I develop my skills and, and naturally the things grow and get more interesting yeah 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 there just ends up being a, a, a natural progression from like building the same thing to like building your own thing but yeah I, I definitely agree with that there are some builders where they find their niche and they they build themselves into that sort of comfortable space where they're always they they like building that certain way and then it's like if you throw anything new at them they're like oh i don't build like that or i i don't know how to build like that and uh it's one of those things that can just it can happen without you realizing it can happen and that's uh the way a lot of these barriers i feel like happen is they just come up at a, you know without you realizing um I'm a, I'm a play devil's advocate there and slightly disagree with you um, okay i actually think like like for example i definitely see that a lot of people will have a mocking style that they'll identify and that they'll continue to work with and often to that that's to great uh public uh avail is that the word people, yeah. people like it essentially yeah yeah and I mean, often, for example, I know that I love building... I mean, it's not, not Bionicle, but for example, I like to build Marvel system stuff. Yeah, that stuff and is so cool, too. sometimes a couple too. people... Will, thank you very much. Uh, and sometimes a couple people will be all like, you know, oh, it's just another Marvel mock from Ben. Who would have thought? And, like, <laughs> you know, so, like, if, if, I, if I'm having fun doing it, then that's okay. Yeah. And in my opinion, I don't necessarily think that it's a problem if someone 
has a niche and they're sticking to it. And then, sure, you could you could challenge them and say like, oh, maybe try building something different because this is this is quite a similar style to some of the other stuff you've done. And I mean, I guess that they could say like, yeah, look, uh, that's not how I want to build. But yeah, I, don't know, I, I I guess I disagree in terms with. If that's what they like doing, then by all means they can. Oh, and yeah, definitely. That's kind of like a niche that they're 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 good with. So why not continue doing it? And I don't think that that's necessarily an issue per se. But I mean, it, oh. but it can be uh, a barrier to to builder himself to or herself to think that if I do this same thing all over again, will people hate me? But they won't. I've never heard that they really would. And uh, I also think this problem is more important with bionicle models because as you build system and, and you build let's say a house i have built uh quite several buildings buildings uh well not very much like cars or or, or trains but mm -hmm. they tend to be quite similar yeah in basic structure of course but in in bionicle stuff you usually have some you know probably not more complicated but of course more specified pieces and and you know you can build really many different legs, for example. You can very easily just use the same basic structure all again, and I don't think it's a problem. But it may might be an internal barrier to to a builder. I can show yeah, you an example. Yeah, and, and to reiterate, I, I think it becomes a barrier when it becomes something that gets in the way of them trying new things. Where yeah, like. Oh, I want to build a car, and then they go sit down to build a car, and they're just like, "I have no idea how to do this because all I've ever built was like Toas, and <laughs> all I've ever built was dudes." And so when they get out, when they go to like try to do something else, and they then they can't. That's a barrier. That's preventing them from doing this new thing, and that's. But is that a? Sorry to interrupt, but is that a barrier? Because that's just the fact that they've been working in one specific area I think it is yeah because it, 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 it's, barrier, I would just say they're branching out well yeah but if like they 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 try and then they fail and then they never do it again because they failed the first time um yeah I would consider that a barrier like I f a personal barrier for me was Rahi I couldn't build him to save my life when I first started trying to build him because all I built was figures uh, prior prior to that, and then when I tried to build a Rahi, I ended up with like this mutant horse looking thing. Um, my Rotuka Tiger is a really good example of just me trying and then just not doing very well, and then I just I gave it up for the longest time because I'm just like I this isn't a thing I do, and then I finally I I took a couple more cracks at it and had some mo moderate success. And then I finally nailed it when I did my uh, T Rex New Emoko. Um, yeah. That was the first time I'm like, oh, okay, I can do this. And for me, that's like an example of a barrier I overcame. Uh, I jumped out of my comfort zone into things that I'm not good at, and I failed, and I stumbled on it, and then I got back up and did it again until I got it right. So you're almost saying that the barrier is the mindset of I can't do this yes exactly that's that's okay. exactly like the the point it where somebody puts a barrier in front of themselves is their own thinking self-defeating attitude so there are three models uh, first is Carmena which is from I think 2011 photos posted in 2012 but uh, it's, a, it's a new photo uh, and Sherry guys from 2015 and better size from 2013 and as you can see the leg design is pretty much the same there are some alternative uh, on the kneecap and but but it's the same thing and there's nothing innovation uh, after the first try here uh, on the legs of course the, the other parts differ a lot but with this I, I often thought that can I use the same leg again and get over with uh, but if you read the comments, so nobody has said that, oh, it's the same Hate Kitongu leg. It's a million times, I hate you, you are a bad builder, and you should do that. <laughs> yeah. Nobody says that. Because, yeah, nobody. <laughs> because hell, that, that is a mental barrier I had, but I had overcome. So, so these days, when I have those legs, I just never take them apart when I 
take apart the mock because I might use them later on. Yeah, some, yeah. Uh, some some altern- alternation. Yep. But, and that's a that's a very good example because uh, one of the things you talk about, Ben, that I really ad- admire and agree with is judging like harshly judging yourself or judging like your early artistic efforts and saying, "Oh, this isn't good enough," and then like, uh, you know, not going forward with it. Uh, you've brought that up before. A-, a mentality like that could absolutely be a barrier as well. Yeah, I think just just from what some of you guys were saying personally two barriers that I guess are the case which sure some people have and I, I know I myself have had them and whether or not I've overcome mm-hmm. them is uh, debatable I think I have to an extent but I know that the two barriers that used to be quite big for me was one uh, one one was kind of like what uh, Ao was saying was the idea of like I can't do that because people will judge me mm-hmm. um, when ultimately like you should be building for yourself. Yes, right? yeah. very much um, so. That's uh... if you're happy with it. Good. If he, for example, like I posted a mock the other day called Zeflin, who was a revamp of the big bad guy in my Bionicle storyline that I'm writing. Okay. And I got a, I didn't get a huge amount of comments cause I posted her mock pages and you know, it's, it's, it's a dying website sadly. Yeah. But, the majority of the comments I got were actually like I got a few comments of like oh it's really cool but I got a couple comments of like eh, it's, it's okay I don't quite like this and then I got one comment uh, oh no a couple comments which was kind of like actually I kind of preferred the old one and and like a lot of my my like mission with revamping it was to fix some of the color blocking issues which I definitely yeah. did mm-hmm. um, but people were talking about like proportions and stuff with it yeah. And, looking over it after I read that critique I'm like whoa you're totally right like a lot of this is a little too small or this does seem a little big but when I finished building that mock, I was very happy with how it looked. And I kept looking at it like and thinking about the critique and stuff. And as much as I could see truth behind that critique, and I was like, you know what? Yeah, stuff is out of proportion or the head is too small or whatever. I'm still really happy with the mock and don't plan on changing it, at least not for a little bit. I'm sure a couple years down the line, I'll look at it and be like, nah, it's time to, it's time to fix those problems. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I was really proud of it when it was done. And... So that so so honestly that for me is is like the end point. I'm happy with it. I'm cool with that. Um, technically, I could. In the past, I may have read that kind of critique and been like, ah, "Well, I'm just a terrible builder." And <laughs> dim, dim, dim. But like, that's not necessarily productive. Yeah, know? and like, that's, that... I know for a fact that wasn't productive because I used to do it all the time and be like <laughs> super sad about it, and then be like, "Well, I'm a terrible builder," and then I don't build anything because I say, tell myself I'm a terrible builder, and then I believe it. But yeah, that's not it, true. It, you know? And and that's one of those things that like I feel like a lot of younger mockers fall into that trap because like especially now um there's like now that bionicle is almost like what two decades old you know there there's there's this sort of old guard and new guard kind of thing going on and (laughs) you know with all these like older like really good mockers like ao and um jackson and just all these other like really really like great like stylistic builders out there putting out some amazing work you know a a kid just starting out on instagram would be like oh my mock sucks and compared to that and i've gotten this at conventions and i've gotten this online it's like oh i'll never be as good as you and then they just kind of quit and i'm just like no 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 that's so so the wrong thinking because you can get there you can do this uh you know, you just got to work at it like we did. Um, you know, we've been doing this for years and years and years. So I'm always like, when I when I meet that sort of mentality, I'm just like, no, you, you can do it and you'll get there because it's Lego. It all goes together the exact same way. We, we don't We don't have like magical powers or anything like that. We're all just putting Lego pieces together. And it's interesting. Oh, sorry, go on. So, you know, like you said, that whole, er, you know, that judging your early efforts harshly and just going, oh, I'm a terrible builder and just quitting. Uh, yeah. That's that's one of the biggest barriers that I think actually is one of the most successful barriers at just shutting people down and making them stop. Right. Yeah, I, well, I, I um... always always try to follow the, the young and beginning building builders in Fiddler so so I can comment to walk because I 
did get comments from good builders when I was starting, and, and it was great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's such an encouragement. And, and I've um, I've seen it the most at, at Bricks by the Bay when, uh, when I'm there, but I do get it online. And it's just like, you know, the, they they see what we do and then they it's such a long journey and like it's like it's like trying to climb a mountain and you're they're at the bottom of the mountain and we're like halfway or up at the top and they just like how am i ever going to get there and so i i think that's one of the things us better builders can do is just like be encouraging of everybody who's building uh no matter what the what their level is and just like if you see a builder that you it, it could just be something you like particularly there was this kid on 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 deviant art who he built like a mac out of um i could tell he just was using whatever parts he had out of his hero factor collection but like the shaping of it was cool and like it was a decent looking little mock for what it was which was parts built out of some kid's collection and I'm like hey this is a great mock you should keep this up you're doing a great job and then he you know replied back to me and it was just all elation because oh wow you know that mocker said a thing um so just encouraging the the new builders it can do so much for them because just right from the beginning, they're putting that barrier in front of themselves. It's interesting. I had, um, I was at a Perth convention not long ago. It was a couple of weeks ago. And um, one thing that was funny, which I'll share, I had I, I had all my Bionicles there and um, I wanted to gauge public opinion in terms of what do people think of Bionicle? Do they even mm-hmm. know what Bionicle is? Are they just going to say it's Transformers? You know, do, do they know what it yeah, is? Yeah. Do... Always. <laughs> yes, yeah. Um, and then, like, what do what do they think of it? You know, like, um, because it's this weird, doesn't quite look like Lego to an untrained eye, yeah. you know, theme. Like, what, what are people going to think? Um, and I had a lot of people say, oh, cool, those are Transformers. And I just sort of stood there like, <sighs> But um, <laughs> I had a couple comments of like, oh, that's Bionicle. And it was like, oh, wow, like, hey, you know. And so everyone who said, oh, cool, Bionicle, I'd have a conversation with and be like, how how do you know Bionicle? What's Bionicle to you? Blah, blah, blah. And yeah. this one kid came up and he's like, oh, I only have the new uh, Bionicles. The old ones are like 30 to 40 years old. I don't have those. And I'm like, well, <laughs> not that old, but okay. Um, Make but you yeah, feel like a grandpa. Yeah, exactly. Um, it was interesting. I had one person who came up and he's he like we had this massive conversation about you know like what was the best theme and like he, he knew his stuff. It was awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's the side of the point. That was off topic. What what I was gonna say is um, when I first 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 started to set up like the like barely been happening an hour for the convention. Um, this guy next to me was setting up his mock and I was then setting up mine and he was and I know him because it's. A local convention yeah um so i pretty much knew everyone there and he was like oh god i'm next to you like i'm gonna have to like jokingly he's like i'm gonna have to break your stuff because like mine's gonna look totally terrible <laughs> next to yours and like i understood the joke but it wasn't totally a joke at the same time like, obviously he's not gonna break no, my stuff no. but like yeah. he's putting himself down right yeah and he genuinely didn't feel as confident about his stuff and i was like oh, no don't judge your stuff dude and like it, I could tell that he he just kind of brushed that off. It was kind of like, a, a, yeah, well, like you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, but I was being serious. I was like, no, like seriously, don't judge your stuff. Like, like seriously. Um, and it was interesting because so many people throughout the convention came up to his stuff and was like, oh my god, this is amazing. And it was. It was a good build. By the end of the convention, he was like, I was blown away with the amount of people who really liked my stuff. Like, wow, I'm. Like, he, yeah. it was as if he left the convention. Like. I am a good builder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, um, I can throw another uh, at Bricks by the Bay this year. Like, so, like, I don't know how I do it. I, I end up winning a, a trophy in the Bionicle category every year. And, and, like, I know I'm a judge. And so, like, people be like, oh, you're just, you know, you're voting for yourself. And I'm like, honestly, no, there's four other people. <laughs> they just keep picking me. And I keep going, okay, well, if you guys think so, I'm not going to say anything. Because, you know, that's the general vibe. Is like if your mock is up for an award, if the other judge, you just abstain from voting. And but so what I try to do with my vote at at, at uh, Bricks by the Bay is I try to like 
first of all, we try to craft the trophies to be something that everybody could. It is like a goal that everybody could hit. Uh, but the other thing is like we try to set goals that uh, is going to target the newer uh, builders like oh best small thing best like funny thing or you know stuff like that and then this year like or last year we got to throw some uh, trophies to some uh, kids that just like they never would have expected to win a trophy against like all the other crazy stuff that was on the table but we're like cool this is neat we like it it's funny and it was it was built by like some little kid um and so he got a trophy and a free lego set and then uh this year um the the mock that won best bionicle overall was uh uh atneus by biomaker and Mm -hmm. you know he's um Liam, you know he's like 16 and he's you know finding his way through bionicle and that was a very good instance of yeah i am good i am a good mocker because like hey this is really cool he um atneus is a uh is a centaur dude it's gold and uh gun metal um it's really it's really cool looking he doesn't have the gr- the greatest pictures of it but like everybody was talking about that mock on the on the table this year and we're like yeah. that thing's got to win cuz it's really cool and so that's a great example of how you can just give some recognition to somebody and just the the smallest amount of encouragement to somebody who doubts themselves can go a mile yeah right so yeah just you know so that's a a good example you know a bearer is just that self-defeating attitude that a lot of starting builders have because they're they're literally putting themselves up against you know people who've been doing it for 10 plus years I, you know, I never felt like a beginning builder when I think it now because when I first started posting mocks online, it was 2007 and I used Brickshelf, which isn't really a community and, and I just linked the mocks to the Finnish Bionicle group, uh, Bioclan, which is still this, my central uh, friend, uh, civil some sort of thing. Uh, and I think I joined Flickering 2009, when I already had uh, had a two years of experience of sharing my work. Yeah. So I didn't so much feel as a beginner builder, even though it was a new community. Because uh, I don't know if it was a that much a community. Uh, I played back then because I just uh, uh, commented some mocks and some people commented my mocks and and so on, but. Uh, I just felt like I'm one of the, the builders. Yeah, um, and the the other thing is like uh, a lot with the, a lot of us old mockers. Like I started mocking in like 2003, 2004 when Bionicle started having enough parts to like really start throwing them together in different ways to where you can actually like oh it's a Bionicle mock but there's like enough different parts. Then mm-hmm. you know the like oh I took Golly and I took Tahu and I took Liwa and I smushed them together. Um, I didn't start posting my own mocks until 2009. Um, I was a very late bloomer in that regard. So I I, I started posting my mocks in 2009. I was a really late bloomer in that regard. And by the time I started posting mocks, like my first mock ever was Ryak, my big giant silver and black and silver dude um and then like my second mock ever that I posted was Mototar and I did it almost out of ignorance cause like I joined DeviantArt I'm like oh this is a cool website there's some cool art here I'll, I'll check this stuff out and then I'm like oh well I should probably maybe put some of my own art up and I like dabbled in drawing and stuff and I'm like well what can I put here that's art and I'm like oh I guess my Lego things are art I guess that technically counts and then just not even knowing that there was an online community and anything I just started throwing them out there and just people kind of just started flocking to to all of my stuff and I just went whoa oh my god Like, and then I realized there's this whole online community and it just snowballed into this whole everything that you see today 
Um, so I think a lot of us, you know, the, us older builders, uh, maybe we don't necessarily feel like we're beginning mockers because we all began at more or less the same time. We were all just kind of right. coming up together. Right. Whereas now, like, you have the established mockers, but you still have new people coming up and finding themselves in the community. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think just that, like, oh, I'm brand new, I, 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 I'm not very good, and there's all these other great mockers. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, that's my fault. <laughs> I... Shut down for a part. Best ringtone ever. <laughs> it's like an eight bit <laughs> Imperial March. Yeah, nice. That's fantastic. <laughs> I might just leave that in there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, um But it, it, it's interesting. I don't I don't actually know where to go with this point. This yeah, so kind of generally raised. Okay, well so so we kinda answered one of our questions. Why do you think barriers happen? Right. Um, why does the sun set in the evening? Yeah, right. It just happened. Um, so this is actually something I thought about, um, as I wrote the questions. This is something I wanted to talk about. And I think the whole situation with barriers is Lego is very good at construction, right? That's exactly what you're doing. You're constructing something. So, right. you know... A lot of people's first experience with a Lego set, it, 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 you know, with Lego is a Lego set. So they they pop up, they buy the they buy the box, they take the box home, they pop open the box, they dump out the parts, open the bags, and then there's the instructions right there that tell you how to build the Lego. Okay. And so a lot of people's primary experience with Lego is being told how to build something. It's, right. And then they have to go figure out how to build it, them, build other things themselves. So I think a lot of people come preloaded with this sort of notion of this is how you build a Lego. Okay. Um, and I think that's just inherent in. Um, uh, I think that's just inherent within the nature of consuming Lego as a. Uh, a product or a hobby. Interesting. Okay, I, I guess, uh, honestly, in my opinion, I don't think it's as important to label why something happens. It just, if it, if it, it just, you know, it just does. It, I think it's more yeah. important to talk about uh, how to how to fix it. I guess. But not that I'm devaluing what you're saying. My yeah. Apologies if it, my no, apologies no. If it it's... comes across that way. But I, 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 I to answer the question. Um, I think it's it's a it's a problem across not just mocking across everything in life. Um, people doubt themselves just simply because as you've grown up, someone's told you don't do that. Someone's told you you can't do that out of jealousy or out of spite or out of I don't know. Just just they they themselves didn't think it was possible and yeah. that it was or it wasn't or whatever. It's it's literally how we're conditioned to grow up. Mm -hmm. um, and honestly, that's always a way of having to improve yourself, not just in terms of being a better artist but just being a better person or, or not not even being a better person just growing evolving learning becoming finding yourself knowing yourself is realizing the um oh, there's a word for it realizing the okay the barriers that people have placed in front of you or the belief systems or the paradigms that's what i was looking for the paradigms that you yourself believe like yeah you know for example i had a friend who till they were 27 years old thought that you were not allowed to not eat the crusts on your pizza. They thought you have to do that because their parents told them to. And then <laughs> when they were 27 years old, they realized, wait a minute, I cannot eat the crusts. I don't have to force myself to eat the crust. <laughs> like it's simple barriers like that. You could have been conditioned your entire life to believe I have to do something this way. And like, yeah, and she'll realize oh, it doesn't have to be this way. It's like we were talking about before, like, you know, um, placing your self-belief in others I, I guess if that's how you want to word it like yeah uh not not self-validating your mocks placing the validation in other people's hands eventually you might realize like Gee, you know what? it doesn't matter what other people think if i like it that's cool exactly you know, like it's it's a, it's a paradigm thing yeah and you know you know that's, that's the central thing in being a stereotypical finnish person is not to believe in yourself uh, and it's it's real in 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 some 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 amount, but mm, I've never had that problem. But of course, doubting yourself might lead to self development. Let's say uh, if I have a, this build and and I think 
is mostly very good, good, but it's not perfect. And if I just let's say spend two hours of rethinking it, it will get better. It won't get worse because if I don't get any ideas, I can still return the old one. But of course, in every ground of art, it's important to know when to stop. Yeah. Yeah. Because you that was can, something. Um, you yeah. can fill with it forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Really fun. You could always, yeah, that you could something. just get, kind of get locked in your own head, and you're just like stuck there, uh, reiterating your idea until that's all that you're doing anymore. Yeah, right. definitely. Yeah, that's something that um I've talked to Shadinger about before. It's like if you are happy with your mock, there's something wrong. Like you as the artist are always going to critique it. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Happy You're with always... something. And that doesn't mean other people won't like it too. Like I've I've seen countless people make art, whether it's Lego or physical painting, whatever. Um, there's always been the person who's made it's been like, eh, really just I don't like that. But you yourself, like outside of their headspace, are like. How can you not like that? Yeah, that's right. the coolest thing in the world. Mm -hmm. But they're like, no, it's stupid. And like, that's just their opinion. Yeah. Like, they've, they've made it. Of course, they're going to be overly critical. Exactly. Because they know, like, every little brush stroke and, like, every little, yeah. like, like I'm doing that currently with my YouTube uh, mock reviews. I'm just like, oh, there's a part where, like, you can see my big, fat, stupid nose and this editing looks weird and uh, the lighting looks like. Yeah, I'm just being overly critical of myself and people are like, oh yeah, cool, mock review, neato. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, yeah, yeah. But like, uh, getting back to like, the whole paradigm of just, oh, this is this and that is that, uh, I feel like the biggest, most applicable barrier that we have as Bionicle mockers is that barrier between system and Bionicle. Like, it's, okay. it's, like it's a canyon wide divide because like system mockers just will not see Bionicle as Lego and Bionicle mockers will just like oh it's system I, I don't use system and then like they only build with Bionicle and there's no denying that that's a huge part of the way our both communities both sides of the aisle think is you know, like you said, you know, do people even recognize it as Lego because it's so different? And like, that's the one barrier I I try to chip away at the most is the that that divide between uh, this is a this is a Bionicle, this is a system part, oh, or 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 like they even get more minute into like this is a uh, this is a G1 Bionicle and this is a G2 Bionicle or this is a CCBS and this is a G1 and <laughs> like people people think that way and when it, like they could just be like you know what it's all Lego and then they could build something really cool with all of it yeah I, I have this, this barrier myself right now that when we have Bionicle pieces and they're quite big and quite complicated and I just think that's pretty good piece but if I build the same overall shape with system bits some small curved slopes and cheese slopes and snot bricks and something I get the same but we talk that uh, irritating piston uh, pattern and, and toes two holes that ruin the thing and yeah I'll go with the system things but in the same time I'm losing something of the sort of flexibility or, or the interesting super three-dimensional mm, sort of what patchwork patchwork is good work of, of building because it's like having these strange shapes yeah the bindle pieces and you have to arrange them to to get in very strange angles to make the figure work as with system you have sort of three-dimensional grid uh, of, of the studs and plates and and so on and yeah with some fiddling with with some offset pieces you can get everywhere you want it's probably not a uh, very sturdy or, or strong connections but you can do it but the binocle it's it's getting the angles and connections work with some bulk joints and stuff it's interesting and i've been missing it for some time now. yeah definitely I think my last last full vital build was 
in December. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it's I'm uh, year looking ago. through your your well, um, uh, Salan, um, your your rainbow, uh, rainbow looking one. She's she's pretty bionicle heavy. Um, yeah, that's the the hair. Yeah, not much else. The, the, uh, Some armor pieces too. Yeah, it's just the bars. But yeah. like, I, I use. I use CCBS uh, as in a figure models a lot. Yeah. They are cool. They are uh, shiny and and clean and <laughs> you know yeah. they have shape. They don't have detail. Yeah, and that's that, that's sort of the trade off. Is like Bionicle can be and CCBS can be more sturdy and, and robust, but like system gets you that like detail that you want. Like your your system based mocks are way more like tighter and controlled and. They're yeah. not as gappy, but they're also very smooth. And you know, like when you look at a Bionicle mock, like, and, and your work is very uh, indicative of this. Uh, and it's one of the reasons I wanted to, uh, sh uh, I picked you for this episode was like you can actually see in your own work just the difference between like, hey, here's a Bionicle mock. Uh, that's a figure, and then here's a system mock that's a figure, and then you have yeah. like gradients between the two. Like this yeah. is, yes. this is blended. This one, or like this one mock might be blended between the two. This one is more bionicle, or this other mock is more system. And you know, you're a great example of like you can get the you can do the same ideas with different approaches. Mm. And, and that's one of the things I really like about your mocking specifically is it's diverse in like that you pick different styles of building you like like you grab different parts like uh, depending on what what built what you're building yeah um, so uh, but like the and this is more of, like I I feel a lot more bionicle builders are are opening up to system, and and, and are exploring what they can do with that. Uh, the one of the biggest barriers though is the other side of the fence, getting the system builders to like think about bionicle, and I find that to be such a a a much more uphill battle. I guess. Yeah, yeah. I think I think uh, binocular builders are more open to the system than uh, system builders are open to binocular. But it's sort of understanding as binocular is now long gone, <laughs> and yeah. But but in other way, binocular pieces are cheap as hell in Bricklink. And yeah, they're very easy. So I think some, uh, let's say, science fiction builders, space builders, mech builders could get a lot of um, out of some vital pieces. Yeah, I agree. Tell some. You, you, you see it every now and then, but but it could be uh, adventured a lot more. Yeah. Um, and that's a good example. Like, you know, Bionicle is pretty cheap, so, like, the the barrier to entry there for a, a system builder who has, like, no Bionicle and they're like, hey, let's try some Bionicle. Like, it's actually pretty low for them because, like, you could easily go on, like, eBay or, or Bricklink and just find a bunch of cheap Bionicle parts and pick up a bunch for not a whole lot of money and then just start exploring that stuff. Yeah, yes. Well, it seems that if you get a random Bricklink store with used pieces and click the Bionicle category, uh, there are a lot of pieces for two cents or three cents yeah. or something you can get get a few hundred parts for very very small amount yeah 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 uh, so <clears throat> but yeah that's um and and like it i remember like when bionicle was first announced that it was coming back or, or when lego first announced that bionicle was coming back in 2014 they did they, they did that whole um like promotion campaign where they're like oh in like three days we're gonna announce this cool thing and then in two days we're gonna announce this cool thing and then at uh 
New York Comic Con, they announced that hey, Bionicle's coming back, and like some of the websites covered it, and then like a bunch of the system people, a bunch of like people in the comment section were like, ah, I don't care, it's barely even Lego, and that just like as as a Bionicle builder, that just kind of breaks my heart. I yeah, uh... it is no. Lego. You can't. That's not an. Yeah. That's not an argument. <laughs> yeah. What were you gonna say, Ben? I. I raised this point on a uh, podcast that Brendan did, where Brendan being Shattuck, yeah, she... where he spoke a lot about barriers, not barriers. Sorry, he spoke a lot about um, the 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 debate between like system and Bionicle and all that. Yeah, and I kind of narrowed it down to the same way that, like, for example, and I don't know how well this might apply to you, Dave, but I definitely know that um, uh, Aero uh, will uh, agree with me. Like, when I'm at a Lego convention and I see a car or a train or something, because I don't really build cars and trains, I'm kind of like, eh, whatever. And I'll, like, go spend way more time looking at dioramas or castles or Star Wars stuff, because I build that. I understand that. Yeah. I know what, what that is. Um, and then one time... I... Technic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. Big technic and... cars. I don't understand them. Oh, yeah, totally. I'm, I'm exactly the same. Yeah. And then one time I built a tank... Uh, in system and uh, that was like a first for me and it was really fun to do and now whenever I'm at a convention and I see tanks I used to in the past just be kind of like eh whatever but now I'm like oh okay so they did that they did that oh I see okay Um, and so I think it's just an experience thing personally Mm. like for example a lot of the comments that I got on my bionicles from AFOLs at the Perth convention I was just at a lot of it was just like I don't don't understand that I don't know what that is so like they kind of just don't want to touch it because it's like, well, how the hell am I supposed to use that? And I even had one guy be like, "What is what is that again?" I'm like, it's, uh, it's Bionicle. And they're like, "Oh, that's the that's the really like difficult one, isn't it? Like, it's really hard to work with." And I'm like, what? Uh, "So like, that's, they just kind of, you know, write it out as like the oh, that's the really hard thing. Like, I can't I can't do." That. Well, and right then and there, they they I can't do that, so they're never gonna try. Yeah, to an extent. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I get some of that at, at, at Bricks by the Bay, uh, depending on who I talk to. Um, like, I really like Bricks by the Bay. They're very... The whole stigma of Bionicle does, just does not exist there. We are treated on equal footing with, like, town and train and robotics and sci-fi and everybody else. We are just we're just another theme there. And I think that has a lot to do with the, the, the staff that run the event. Since the inception of the convention, there's always been somebody building Bionicle. And so it right. just didn't have that early, early, like, oh, what's this? Oh, we got to make room for that now? Oh, geez. Um, it just was always part of the convention. Um, but, yeah, I definitely get that whole, like, oh, that's uh, that's weird. What is that? Like, uh, but the other, like, the, the, the flip side of that coin is, like, I've talked, like, I talked to this older guy. Um, he must have been, like, in his 70s. And just, like, he saw our work and he's just like, oh my god, I'm so inspired to go like grab my like three pound bag of Bionicle that is just sitting in the drawer, <laughs> and see what I can build because I'm so freaking bored of houses and trains and stuff that like I see all the time <laughs> at the lug meetings. Yeah. And he's just like, oh dude, I got a witch doctor. I'm gonna go bust that guy out and see what I can do with him. And I'm like, great, That's go so for cool. it. And I was like, yeah. and that was like the the last day of the convention too when we were tearing down. And that was cool. such a great experience, just inspiring somebody who is just bored with system to try Bionicle. Yeah. Will he be there next year? Because it'd be so cool <sighs> to be like, what did you do? And he'd be like, oh, man. I have no idea. I I have no <sighs> Like I said, we were tearing down, so it was kind of like everybody was, like, shifting and putting locks away. And, uh, yeah, I wanted to, like, get, yeah. find find where this guy was, like, if he was on the Internet or what he built because, like, we were already tearing everything down. But, yeah. Um, so, like, I, and the other thing is, like, one of the barriers I, like, that is interesting to see within system builders is... Like you see it more in older builders because they had to develop with it, whereas now it's just a thing that is common. But it's not, you know, studs not on top. Uh, I, I I remember seeing like some comments where like 
and I've talked to a few people where like they had to wrap their head around snot because that just totally messed with their preconception of well you put the base plate down on the table and then you put the Lego brick on the base plate and then you put the other Lego brick on the Lego brick and then they just keep going up and then mm-hmm. where they had to like oh here's a snot brick so it goes this way and it goes that way and it goes that way and it goes that way and they just yeah. totally just warped their their mind to have to like uh, conceive that you know and wrap their brain around that um Whereas Bionicle, just like, it does that, it did that from day one. It's just like, hey, you snap this ball joint into here, and it could go that way, and it could go this way, and it could go that way. The the connector pieces stick out, you know, sideways, and uh, there's these cool angular right. parts that, you know, bend the part, you know, 30 degrees that way. And, you know, like, Bionicle is spherical almost in its direction, because it can go literally every which direction. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good point. And and I think that's another reason why like the system builders have such a huge barrier with it because it's not just up and down or or forward and backwards and like even a snot brick is relatively straightforward in that you put it on the brick and then you the brick faces sideways. Whereas Bionicle, like I said, it's just like it's up and down, it's backwards and forwards, it's rotated, it's 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 every which direction. Yeah, I yeah. think uh, the another one is is the shape of the pieces because they very often look that they consist of several ones, especially the old ones, not the, not the new. Yeah, the the CCBS ones. stuff is a lot but, but, smoother. Yeah, but but they look like that you can't use it in anything else than a like bone or or a, or a head or something like that. Well, like for me, it's just the oral shape and getting it to the right angle uh, in relation to the other pieces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exists. And, and, and look, that applies to just mocking in general, especially in Bionicle. And that's one of the, the things that, like, that's to me what Bionicle mocking quintessentially is. It's taking this weird part and getting the angle right and getting the relationship to all the other Lego parts correct. Yeah. Yeah. That said, though, like ultimately, if you don't want to build Bionicle, don't build Bionicle and build system and vice versa. Like yeah. each their own. Yeah, but like don't. But yeah, at the same point, like don't like the system builders open especially. Open your mind. <laughs> yeah. yeah, open your mind <clears throat> and like be open to the idea that um, you could build with this. Um, I think you know uh, that's one of the another barrier that people put up without really realizing it is they just say oh well I'm not going to do this and then they never do yeah and really this this can apply to us too because I've seen some really cool uh, Galidor piece using mobs oh, lately <laughs> yeah right and, yeah like I, I actually went to go buy a Euripides like, like, but the seller won't sell it to me now <laughs> it's like buy a barrier times Hundred. Yeah, yeah. Kind of really, really. Like I'm actually oh, that's so funny because like uh it's called the the pilgrim. Uh I, Yeah, yeah, that's one, that's one. Yeah, yeah the yeah. pilgrim where it's that weird green looking thing. It uses the Euripides torso and I just saw that just like, oh my god, that's brilliant. And then like, oh, I wonder what a Euripides costs right on Bricklink. And so I went over there and I found one for seven dollars and I'm just like oh, I gotta buy it, but now the seller isn't selling it to me. He he's not responding, so I'm like so sad because I was almost got a cheap Euripides and to like try and use <laughs> these weird Galador parts, but now it doesn't look like that's gonna happen. So I'm so bummed about that. But yeah, like that's a great example of like how Bionicle snubbed their nose at Galador. Like, could you imagine like if there was a whole like Galador sub fandom where they're just like, oh, those Bionicle mockers are jerks. They don't ever recognize <laughs> us. Like, and we would totally do the same thing. I think we can move on to our our um, next talking point. Um, Q. Yes. Yes. So, what are some of your barriers, previous or current? Well, I I already mentioned to to say making the same thing all over again again but I'll get over that uh, the other things um, well one barrier not posting a mocks but posting a, a whip photos <laughs> of unfinished books because I, I never 
I never do that anymore because I don't want to spoil the surprise oh. to people. I mean, yeah. I could get some uh, feedback, but uh, I just don't want to show anything of them before they're ready because I I have quite a lot of uh, trust in myself. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sort of thing. So so I just I just um, build stuff and think that. I can't wait until they can see it when it's ready. That, which is, in a way, uh, shame because it's cool to discuss unfinished work. I mean, I'm I, I'm studying architecture in in, in university right now. Okay. We have a lot of these uh, projects and and uh, uh, we show the unfinished piece of work and what we've got to the to teachers and professors before before we uh, show the finished works and it's very very good for for us us to get feedback yeah. in the middle but because say I'm just a student and, and beginner and don't know a lot of stuff but in, in uh, Lego community I feel I've got some uh, name and some let's say well trust in myself mostly so I feel that I can do it uh, and just show the finished work because it's not important compared to school work even though it's very important to me, of course, but not not in that much in in, in overall. So I I don't really show much. Oh, it's also because I only have this, you know, a big camera, and I I am I'm not a perfectionist, but I still feel I have to take good photos and and edit them properly and then publish them. Yeah. And not just uh, snap some and throw them to Twitter or something. That that's I've been doing two hours for now say something to it uh, it's a barrier uh, and I uh, because I'm moving to bigger projects right now I have the, the a new shogunate model with two samurais and the bridge is it's more than 90 centimeters long one yeah it took quite a while and, and lots of pieces and weights a lot and I had this uh, city block thing in, in a system model which I haven't published Properly because I haven't photographed it because it's have been uh, at the local museum for half a year now, mm. uh, and and I'm working on another block a bit smaller size, but uh, it, I think it's like 96 times 64 studs. Wow! Uh, and and I make the the buildings and but I still won't post them before I have the whole thing ready and and photographed because it's sort of ambition I think if that's the right word uh, to what I'm doing and yeah um, I, I feel the same way I, I, I've done like with my mech that I'm working on uh, that big uh, white and green mech with like orange highlights uh, that's like the only mock I've done like wit pictures of uh, like publicly uh, one of the ways I, I kind of get around that whole like I want feedback but I don't want to publish it is I just share it with mm -hmm. like I share it with you guys um, yeah um, like that's my go to solution for, for that specific problem is I just share I share it but I share it privately with other mockers whose feedback I want like I'm constantly sending Ben pictures of uh, Merchant Mateo and I've sent you some pictures of him too and like yeah. Because I'm actually modeling Merchant Mateo off of your work, a big deal. Because like you've done the like the really nice like long flowy robes and very regal looking, mm -hmm. elegant looking mocks, and I'm just like, oh, I gotta kind of channel that into yeah, my mock. You. And so, uh, like that's always a good solution. Is if you're struggling to like post your mocks or or you you just have a bunch of whips, but you're not doing anything with them. Uh, you can always just share them with your friends and just like get like that little one percent of the Bionicle community's feedback because they're just the people that you just happen to know and be like, hey, what do you think of this? Yeah, that's that's right. Um, I probably should do that. I mean, I of course show my university folk when I have uh, friends to come around at my my home. So yeah, I show them. Of course, most of them aren't. Uh, builders some of them might be old builders okay in a few years times but some some people are just well uh not uh fiddling with lego but well i'm architect students so they have at least some yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> artistic uh you know you know uh, experience gotcha so, so it might work. and that's always like that's a sometimes a good thing to have like 
to to get that feedback from somebody who like say you're working on a tank and it's like well i'm not an expert in tanks but how about i show this like guy who's like really into like historical stuff and uh Mm -hmm. you know get their feedback on a tank or you know stuff like that um that's another reason why i like talking to you specifically and ben because you guys are more system builders than I am, and I'm like, hey, this system mock, this mock I'm building is really system heavy. What do you guys think? And your responses have been more positive than I was expecting because, like, again, you just get in your own head of just like, well, this isn't very good. I don't like this, and they're gonna rip it. They're like, when I post this, they're gonna rip it to shreds. Um, like with Merchant Mateo's sleeves is the part that's giving me the most problems right now and I'm just like stuck in my own head trying to like honestly I could have finished the thing by now if I had just finished the sleeves <laughs> but yes I guess my oh, yeah sorry. yeah you know I was literally just about to ask you the question <laughs> so my barriers I would say there's two that stick out for me one was similar uh, along the lines of what uh, Eric was saying which was the the whole like I can do it myself I, I got this I don't need feedback <laughs> um, and not not like posting more or like sitting with it long enough and thinking about it I guess sometimes I do and sometimes I don't sometimes I'm just like yeah it's fine and then I post it and then I'm like actually wait no I could have fixed this or that <laughs> um, like for example I like, do that exact same thing system, yeah like I just built a few system mocks I'm like great it's done I'm so happy and I like take photos and they're really good photos and then I look at it after the photos and I'm like oh, could have added that or I should have added that <laughs> and um, then I'm like great now I'm going to retake the photos or it's like ah, I won't retake the photos I'll just put a photo at the end of like oh I added this um, <laughs> but yeah like now more so I guess I do have the um, uh, I, 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 I like you you were saying Dave like I'll, I'll post it to a few people who will um whose feedback I appreciate uh, or post it online and get feedback from all sorts of different people yeah. who I wouldn't have expected getting feedback from. And often I find getting feedback in odd places is the best. Like I used to love when mock pages were super active. I would post and I would post something and then I'd see like a very like they only build system builder would comment on a bionicle. I would always get really excited because it'd be like, cool. That means they're going to post a really weird perspective yeah. in their comment. That, um a Bionicle builder probably wouldn't see mm-hmm. it, so it's like, oh, that's going to be really cool. Yeah, I, I, um, yeah. When, when I used to, like, I I have a Mock Pages account, and I haven't used it in forever because, again, the uploader is busted, and you can't put new mocks there, so... Uh, but I remember when I was posting mocks there, I would get some comments from people who, like, I didn't know, or, like, and I'd go look at their stuff, and it was, like, really different, and I'm just like, yeah, totally, they'd give you this weird comment that just, like, isn't just like, oh, that's a cool Bionicle, neat, you know, they gave you this really interesting, yes. uh, like, sidelong glance at it, I'm like, oh, that was really cool. Um, I got a few of those mm-hmm. off of mock pages back when I posted. So, yeah, you, you said you had two barriers. So, what was the other one? Yes, my my second one is time. Oof. Now, this is something <laughs> that I I know in concept. The enemy of but all mortals. Execution works, <laughs> and like in execution, uh, like I understand. Let me start again. <laughs> I understand how to beat the concept of time in execution in concept but not in it not like execution is a different story i know uh and i'm about to get really uh, (laughs) weird here i get the quantum physics aspect of time is an illusion (laughs) and time is what you make of it and only living in the moment etc but uh and often i'm able to implore that um but i don't always I, 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 it's it's one of my paradigms is the thing of like oh well I need X amount of hours to do that oh, which isn't always true yeah um, uh, and like getting myself stressed out over like I haven't got enough time yeah uh, um that's a really good example because like uh because like right now for a mock of its size Merchant Mateo is taking me forever to build and it's not a very big mock it's not even a very complicated mock in fact I'm borrowing a good majority of the designs from the original Mateo into this mock. So, like, half the mock is already designed because I'm wholesale copying the upper torso. And yet, this mock is taking forever because, like, I'm 
I I feel like I'm trying to cram like six months worth of like designing it and then thinking no I don't like that and then coming back to it and working on it and then that that process that we mockers like to go through where we come back and make the idea better you know you know get it past mm-hmm. version one or two I feel like I'm trying to cram all that time into this one version and so it's taking me like three weeks to build a mock that could have taken me three days yeah, I'm sorry, but I'm a fast builder. I mean, <laughs> when I uh, people ask me in conventions that how much time does it uh, build a one cartel like this? When I have, let's say, I was in Worldcon, which is the the big big science fiction convention that was in Finland uh, a few months ago, and it's not gonna going to be in Finland in the next hundred years, I think. <laughs> and then we had this uh, the biggest uh, labor convention, Finland people, Rakenus uh, I think it was three weeks ago, and I had the same models, I had, I think, 36 or 34 models displayed there, uh, mostly my Discworld stuff, uh, and some, some, uh, Cherosuit Samus was the only uh, full thing, because it was a science fiction convention, so it, it felt uh, appropriate for that, yeah. and I replied that uh, it's maybe 6 to 30 hours per model. Uh, of course, sometimes I made a head and it stays in a box for, let's <laughs> say, uh, 90 months and then I return it and finish it. But it usually don't take some hours walking on a model. Uh, the time frame may be very big, but I'm usually good fast. I get bored <laughs> when it gets too much time. And, you know, uh, of course, in some bigger project like some house blocks or some right bridges, it takes more, but not that much more. yeah and that's one of the things I've noticed is like uh, it seems like a lot of mockers in the Bionicle community like the the builders like you where they build like where they build the more statuesque kind of builds that are just very aesthetically pleasing and pretty to look at and, and then they take the really nice photos it seems like a lot of those style of builders build really fast and that's why they have those kind of mocks is because they can throw it together pretty quick uh, shoot it and then post it and then tear it apart and then move on to the next one. Hey, I don't tear my box. You don't, but some other people do. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah, no, I don't either. I I am I rarely rarely take a, a mock apart. Uh, <laughs> the most infamous time I did that was Mototar, and oh my god, I regretted doing that because everybody screamed at me for like a year. That where's Mototar? I'm like, I took him apart, and I I felt like I stepped on a, like a community landmine. So not posting your stuff in time. That's that's Ben's barriers. And then not posting stuff and reusing the same idea multiple times. Um, so I, I'll answer my own question in this regard. So one of my barriers is concept. The thing for me about mocking is what intrigues me about building this or that is the actual concept of the mock. And of like what what am I actually building and so I feel that I won't build a mock if I feel like everybody else has done it or or enough yeah, other people have done it like like everybody is screaming at me to build a bioformer and I just have absolutely no interest in building a bioformer because I've seen a bunch of bioformers out there I just and so I feel like there's some cool ideas out there, but I probably won't build them anytime soon because I've seen enough people do it. Oh, it's great in character building because there's not much character builders around. So most of them is new when you. Yeah. Do. It's great. But but like yeah, the flip side of that is like I can use because like oh nobody's built a fast attack vehicle. Uh, I've never seen one of those like you know like a Halo style like fast attack vehicle where you got a pilot and a passenger and a gunner I'm like alright let's go do that and then I built a yellow car or like I built <laughs> I built a flying car and then I built a dinosaur I built a giant eight legged uh, noodle armed robot and I built a guy in a wheelchair and like I built all of that stuff because nobody else has built it yeah, I mean, most of your creations are original ideas. I think there's a great uh, diversity of, of ideas in your photo stream. When I'm looking at this, there's this uh, Walker thing with, with a tube 
legs, yeah. and and the next next one is like a vulture guy <laughs> using these Star Wars pieces and Legends like, Chima Chima pieces. So so I, I I know what you're talking about because when I'm looking at my photo stream, there's first there's a Discord character, then there's a real person, then there's a own character, then there's a guy in two characters from a book, then two of my own characters, and and uh, three or four and model of a house <laughs> yeah. and then a screenshot from a video game so <laughs> I get a lot of ideas from things around me all the time <laughs> so so there are plenty of concepts to work with but then again you have a lot more of your own very extraordinary concepts on your photo stream than I do oh thank you I like like, like this uh, ice giant next to some kind of uh, General Grievous uh, as good fellow and, and then there's the knight and they don't have much to do with each other which I think is great because I can never know what you will post next yeah 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 and, and like that's um that's a very conscious effort on my part uh, of just like okay I just built this so I don't want to build another one of those that's too similar like it because like I, I feel like I always have to like go sort of diagonal from myself like so if I built a big dude I'll probably want to build like a small dude or a medium sized figure or if I built like a like a car then I'm like okay let's go build something that's not a car and, and that's also like an active um, effort to like gauge what the community is doing like, oh, these are the kind of things people are building. And I'm like, okay, let's go not do that. In doing that, like, I, I've kind of turned myself off of some ideas that would probably be, like, be some really cool ideas to do. Like, again, the Bioformer is the glaring example. Like, if I actually sat down and built a Bioformer and actually figured out how to make it all transform, I'm pretty sure I could do a decent job at it. But because I've seen Bioformers before and, like, my, uh... Uh, my colleague, uh, Ben, who's the other theme coordinator in the Bionicle section at Bricks by the Bay, he's got this giant, massive bioformer called uh, Decepticon Tyrant. Um, and it transforms from a big, huge T-Rex into a dude. And, like, he actually makes a show of it at the convention every year. And people gather around, they ooh and awe, and it's freaking awesome. Um, so, like, he and he has a few other ones that I think are, are bioformers as well. So, like, being next to that every year, I've just been like, okay, I'm definitely not building a bioformer anytime soon, probably ever. Mm -hmm. And so by focusing so much on concepts, I've kind of shut myself off from certain ideas that are more popular. So, yeah, that, uh, that would be my biggest barrier the only other barrier i can really really think of that like is affecting me right now is i'm actually trying to build more in system and just my actual parts collection is totally not tailored to building with a base plate i'm trying I, like i i, I uh, traded a base plate off of a friend uh for like a couple of brick heads and like i have a a 48 by 48 base plate now and i'm trying to learn how to build with all this you know all the system style parts and like trying to like understand things that are super common to like system builders but it's new territory to me and I'm understanding that I just do not have the parts to do that and the reason I don't have the parts isn't because I don't have money to buy parts or that's not the reason the reason is because the parts I've actually selected for myself and the parts I go out of my way to go get are not those kind of parts so my own bias in like what I like as far as Lego is now keeping me from has is now keeping me from building different things that I want to try to experience yeah right okay so, like, my own my own preferences in, like, Bionicles and Ninjago sets and, like, that kind of thing is, like, well, that Ninjago set was cool, but it only came with, like, three of that one part, so good luck. <laughs> and, like, you system builders where you can build these great big houses and, and like, Ben, your, your, uh, your Marvel dioramas, like... You know, I, I'm realizing now that, like, to build those style of mocks, you have to have a lot of the same style of part. Yeah. Yeah, totally. And I just don't. Con like, concept biases and then 
parts preferences is, is, is what what's been a barrier for me lately so yeah that covers that question pretty pretty well um so here's the next question how can mockers overcome their mental barriers i think it's just a case of self-belief i think i feel like we've kind of covered a lot yeah of this yeah already. but i wanted i, I, I wanted like to frame it into just... like one exact question i think it's of course uh uh there ain't one answer how to overcome the barriers but i think it's about this being a hobby and fun thing and the main thing I think is to build for yourself do what you want to do and you look at your old work so you know when you have been developing and of course we should aim to better Yeah. but if it's challenging you can do what you like it's not serious you don't owe to the world to build something specifically, do what you want. Yeah, I I, I, can, I very much agree with that, um, and that's one of the like big reasons I, I I've been very boisterous about that. I was just like, you know, I I build this for me. I'm not building it for you. So if you don't like it, well, okay. But like, and th- but that's not to say that I don't take constructive criticism. Um, yeah. yeah, definitely build for yourself, and you're the only one you have to please at the end of the day. That's some very solid advice that I absolutely agree with. I think I agree with that in terms of building for you, but I guess, and this is going to sound like cheesy, <laughs> but honestly... More, more, more sagely life advice. advice from Ben Kazi. <laughs> honestly, it's the best advice I can give. It's 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 it, um, The effectiveness is, of it is to the degree in which you do it, but believing in yourself... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, is a big is a big yeah. one. Uh, genuinely trusting that you can do it, yeah. uh, and then not not giving up. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Um, that's some really great uh, advice, and I actually wanted to weasel this in there, but I actually um, while I was at Bricks by the Bay, I met Joe Menno, who does um, he's the editor in chief for a Brick Journal. Yeah. Okay. Right. And so, like, if you actually go get issue forty-eight, I believe it is. There's actually an article in there oh. written by me. Oh, um, okay. And I and it's really cool because it's like a four four five page article, and then like there's pictures of Matteo, and it's kind of like introducing the 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 readers to Bionicle and be like, hey, we're not so different after all. And <laughs> so, like, I was I'm actually. Like I wrote an actual article, uh, very much in the s- same vein as this uh, this first episode, uh, you know, of talking about barriers. And one of, in that uh, article, I interviewed uh, Molly, uh, Alira, and, and uh, she said something. You know, we talked about like the question I asked her is like, do you feel like there are actually any barriers for women in mocking? And and I asked her, and I also asked Tyrixis this, and they both just said no, like not really, no, and which is nice to hear. Like, like that's great to hear that like there's not really a barrier for women. They don't feel like oh well, I can't mock, I can't build Lego because I'm a woman, like because like certain other industries and other hobbies definitely have that problem. Um, so it was really refreshing to hear that that's not really an issue but one of the things Molly said that just really stuck to me is like sure she faces adversity because she's a woman in my you know in the bionicle community but it's not a barrier because it doesn't stop her and that just really stuck to me I'm just like yeah you don't let it be a barrier because you at the end of the day you keep building and you keep doing what you do when you very easily could have let that shut you down. That really just goes to show that, like, a barrier is only a barrier if you let it be one. At the end of the day, everything's a mindset. Yes, exactly. If you come in with a mm. positive... Not nece- It doesn't have to necessarily... Well, positive helps, but if you come in with... That, that's why I was saying believing in yourself. Yeah. Is because if you come in believing you will, you will. Like, not everyone believes in the law of attraction, but if you do, it's the basic law of attraction. Yeah. 
I already kind of knew the answer because I had been given this a lot of thought, but this is ultimately like the answer I feel like we were all like we were going to come to anyways. And, and and that is very much true that it is a mindset and the one of the ways you can just overcome the barriers that you know you're encountering is to think about it and maybe adapt or change your mindset. Yeah. And I mean, like, I don't want to be, like, preaching here or whatever, <laughs> but, like, ultimately, I mean, like, when Dave said, hey, Ben, come talk about barriers with me on this podcast, my, like, I, I kind of came just to, just to give my two cents. I never, I never wanted to come to be like, it's time for people to change who they are. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Be, like we, like we were saying, build, build for you, build what, how you want to build, but, like, I, I, I have seen a bunch of people be like, how can I be a better builder? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, honestly, that's it. It's in the mindset. Exactly. It's, it's so, believing that you can do it. I yeah, guess. really, really, really. Exactly. And that's that was the entire point of this episode today. So uh, I think that about wraps up the actual like discussion part of the uh, episode. Yeah. So now we're actually going to move into some fun questions. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, the questions at the end. The best part. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I literally have a, a word document that says "end of podcast questions" because I couldn't come up with like any pithy name for it. So, okay, if okay, question one. Um, I sent these to you guys. I don't know if you still have them handy, but yeah. question one: If you had to give one piece of advice to Bionicle Mockers, what would it be? Well, uh, I think we have had so much of these uh, deep. Uh, life uh, <laughs> life uh, tips for uh, open your mind and 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 build for yourself and believe in yourself stuff so i'm not going to give you one of those i'm going to give you a piece of advice which is actually a, a piece of system which is the boat stack uh, which is you know two times two piece with uh, stutz four stutz on the other side and very clean row yes uh, surface on the other <laughs> other side and, and the stats are hollow which means you can connect it to a ball bar or an anti-stat or yep. even a technical which means you can make some very sturdy and good looking uh, joints to figures and, and you can use them to fill some uh, uh, irritating too much detailed pieces and and you can they are very sturdy and smooth and awesome and I love them and take them in very wide uh, selection of colors they just record them in dark red in the London bus set I can't wait to get <laughs> yeah right that was my oh dude I love the boat stud the boat set is one of my favorite system parts I and it's funny that you actually bring up the boat stud because it's actually uh, one of the answers to my upcoming questions so okay Ben if you had to wow spoilers dude yeah right um I I, I kind of want to answer with like this is the piece that I would give to, to... <laughs> you had to give one, um, which I guess would be flex tube, because flex tube is very helpful. My advice, yeah, I'm with, I'm with the uh, air. Like we've, we've already kind of given a bunch, but mine is just, just have fun. Don't take it so seriously. Yeah, really, really. Just, just, um, just have a good time. My piece of advice to uh, Bionicle mockers that I would have to give, uh, not copying you guys, is sort your parts because you will save yourself so much time if you no can just go find the part and give yourself a good building sp space like a lot of builders build on the floor still or they just like I, I did a poll recently where they're just like hey where do you build your mocks like you build it on the floor you build it at a desk and a lot of people were like oh I build them on my bed so that means I gotta like pick up my parts every night and then put them into a box and then go to bed and then I gotta dump them back out and can you imagine just like waking up to an Anuva claw in your butt? Oh, it so much. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> or oh, the smallest GRP. Uh, yeah. <laughs> or the new two metros uh, sp spiky weapon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. Or just like yes, thinking it's a spider and like freaking out, and you're like, no, it's just. It's just <laughs> oh, I'd rather take a spider than, than new yeah. metros weapon. Yeah. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> yeah, that would uh like seriously, you think about stepping on a regular Lego or like oh, I stepped on a Lego, I'm like, I'm a bionicle builder. Trust me, you have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> can I can I can I ask a question, Dave? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Uh, 
I, I, I was asked this by um, non-Lego people who came to my house, and they're like, because... I don't know about you guys, but I hate the, oh, don't step on Lego or, like, it hurts so much to step on Lego jokes just because, like, you know, I get tagged in that all the time by people on <laughs> yeah, Facebook. Yeah, so, like, I do too. It's just a joke I've heard enough of. Like, yeah. Um, but the, the question they asked was really good. It was, what's the most painful piece you've stepped on? Because they were like, you've clearly stepped on heaps. Uh, and I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> question. So, so that is my question. What's the most painful oh, Lego part? Oh, man. Uh, I have to think about that. Be- I can give my answer straight away. What is it? To give you time to think. It is the Anuva claw. I did step on one, and it hurt. Yeah, the Anuva claw. You know what? Um, I don't know if it technically... Well, because it, it, it it's been used in Bionicle, but it's more... You see them elsewhere. Uh, you know the big round... Um, they use them. They use them on the uh, the power miners sets. The 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 big wheels that are. I like the. The yeah. that's like a drill, but yes, it's like yes. also a wheel. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah I stepped on because this is while I was working on uh, Panopticon, my big noodle mech. Right, and he has a bunch of those on him. Uh, so I got up to answer the phone. Uh. Uh, the house phone. Um, which is, you know, obviously not in my room. Uh, and I came back, and I just didn't... It was in black, so I just... It, it was easy enough to miss. I stepped on that thing right in the bottom of... Like, right in the middle of my foot. And, oh, my God, you would not believe pain. Because that thing is nice and spiky, but it's also blunt enough to just still not bend. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. that was. Man. I, I and I I almost I almost ate it. I almost ate shit, you know. <laughs> stepping on the thing, I'm like, oh god! And then I almost fell on all the rest of my parts. <laughs> so imagine like stepping on a Lego. Imagine just falling on all your Lego. Yeah, god. Oh, know. got it. I do feel like as a as an A fall that my feet are like um, conditioned yeah. to just be stronger yeah. now like genuinely because people are like oh do you step on Lego much I'm like no like I can't remember the last time yeah, I had no, like, like, actually maybe, hurt maybe, myself maybe. by stepping on stuff I feel like my feet have evolved <laughs> my, well yeah. also my like it's funny because like I don't know if you guys have ever seen pictures of me but like I'm a big dude I'm 6 foot 3 I'm like 280 pounds I'm like I probably should have gone and played football American football, right? right? I'm a big dude, yet I am surprisingly limber, and I can, like, prance around, like, back when I still built, like, on the floor. I would leave myself little strategic spots to, like, put my feet, and I would prance around my Lego and then sit back down on the floor. And so, like, this, this great big American corn-fed dude just prancing around his Lego, just do 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 and then, you know... No, I found I found that as well. That's really interesting. I wonder if I wonder if everyone else is the same. Like I find that too. Like I mean, if you look on my Instagram, you'll see a bunch of photos yeah. of me dressed up as Spider Man. So like I don't know if that has anything to do with it. But like I'm I'm like a freaking ninja jumping around my Lego room. Well, like there are pieces on the floor all yeah. the time, and I'm I never step on it. And like you, there's this little there's little strategic spots that you just know to go. Yeah. Right? And like I kind of get used to it. Like at the at the moment, I've just got one pile of Lego on the floor that's kind of on the way yeah. out. But like, I don't like it's, have... just, it's just habit at this point to not step on it. But yeah, like I'm just super limbo about it. That's really interesting. Yeah, I, I don't have Lego on the floor. If I had Lego on the floor, they're in the wrong place, and they should be moved elsewhere because I built on a table. I built nowadays everything on a table. Uh, when I made the samurai bridge, I made that on the floor because I need so much basic bricks. But right. otherwise, it's it's on the table, and of course, I have bags of Lego on the floor by the table. Yeah. Because they can't all fit in the table, but they are in Ziploc bag, so it does hurt, and they are basic pieces anyway. I I don't remember stepping on a piece. I mean, I'm a small man, <laughs> <laughs> and, and and I'm not very a child man either. Oh, that's funny. So um, I, I don't have that much weight, so it's not hard, hard so much to step in anything, but I have stepped on Lego for many years. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, yeah. This was that, my incident was re- recent enough to to remember the pain but it wasn't that recent <laughs> um but i've actually moved um all like, like my i've developed a desk setup now and like when you actually go look at uh <laughs> self promo awesome here um if you go look at my recent uh mock review of new emoko i shot that at my uh, workspace because shooting it on the photo range was too uncomfortable for me because it's a lot lower 
than my desk. So yeah. like I I have this new setup where all my stuff is on the table and I actually have a build space to work off of now, and it's like so refreshing because it's like I felt like I came out of the dark age. <laughs> <laughs> yeah right. Um. So yeah, like that's my advice. Uh, sort your parts because you'll save yourself so much time, and give yourself a proper building <laughs> space because just having that that space to create, you 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 don't necessarily think about it, but it just it it subconsciously just helps you build better when you can just leave it there, knowing I can like leave my parts exactly where they're at, and then be gone. All like go to school, go to work, and then come back, and then it's all right there. Like if you have the space to like just like even if it's just a desk in your bedroom, just having that little bit of space where you can build and, and not necessarily disrupt it is such a huge help. Yeah, yeah. So that's my advice. Okay, next fun question: What what's a part you wish existed but doesn't, and recolors do not count? Okay, uh, I have tons of system parts I wish okay. to exist, but as this is a bionicle thing, no, I no, no, the, no. You can you, you, you can give down. us you can give us two answers. You can give us a bionicle or a technic answer, and you can give us a system answer. I will accept that. Okay, but my system answer is just a list of different slopes that don't oh. <laughs> like <laughs> like some corners. Oh yeah, like the, the you know the very smallest, the one by two slope, the curved slope. I can't yeah, stand. I can't. Bow, I can't fantastic. fucking stand that there's not a corner slope for that because there's so many times where I like yeah. I got a curve here and I got a curve here and I need to connect them and I can't. Yeah, but but. On the system thing, no, no, technique thing, I think I'd love to have a 1.5 long axle, like we have two axle, and it's the smallest one. So when you have thing, when you only can stuck it to one stud uh, or one unit oh. deep, and you have to connect something uh, or half a unit yeah, yeah, yeah. wide into it, you get a, a, a little knob of half of the unit of axle sticking there and it's it's so irritating. Yeah. Let's say it's those old old pulse socket pieces where you can't push the axis through so it's gonna be stuck there, you can put a tree along yeah. all the way through and, and have little crops. You you that that that's I'd I'd wish to exist. Uh and other things when they already made the uh, the new newish uh, axle pin pieces, the one with two long pin and one long axle. And two, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those they just added those and recently, and those are great. super helpful. Yeah, I, I find myself using those all the time, and I keep ordering. Like, at, like when I make a Bricklink order, if I have the extra cash uh, to spare, I'll grab like ten of those in like the the where it's the two long axle and the one long pen, and then the uh, the gray two long pen and one long axle. I'll grab like ten of those just because like oh, I used like. I used a few of them on my last mock. Let's grab more so I don't run out. Um, I love those parts. Yeah, great is that they, they come in good colors, not blue. Or yeah, yellow. yeah. Something, mean... something black and gray. Which is yeah. Better. Okay, well, how about you, Ben? I want you to know that uh, when you sent me this question, I was like, I got this. This is easy. And I was going over the questions in my head last night before I went to bed. <laughs> and I was like, oh, the question about the, the which which part would you like to see that? And and I was like, oh, I got this. I got heaps of recolored parts that I want. I want a bunch of like stems in dark green or, or brown and stuff. Like, I got this. And then I remembered it was like, no, no, re recolors don't count. I was like, crap. No, no, no. I, was, I didn't stay up. So... I was like sitting in bed like, what do I pick? And I was staying up late and everything. Um... <laughs> This is surprisingly difficult because a lot of what I want is recolors. Um, mainly, like I said. Oh, oh yeah, me too. Like, stuff. oh, trust me. I, like, I wish they would recolor the um, the ball, uh, the mixel joints, the uh, the cup, the cup yeah, side. The socket. The, it only comes in dark, no. dark gray now, dark bluish yeah. gray, and that's a very recent. Uh, that's a very recent addition, Please, and it only comes in dark, uh, light bluish gray. I wish they would like recolor it into like black and tan. And just actual useful colors. Yeah, yeah, um, but um, so yeah, like re like the list of recolors I want is a freaking mile long. But no, I'm I mean very specifically a part a, a physical Lego piece that you wish existed but currently doesn't. For the longest time, it used to be a one by one brick with because we currently have a one by one brick with the one stud on yeah. the side and then the Travis brick one by one with studs on all four sides. But I wanted one with two studs on. 
Yeah, now you just got that. And it just came out, and I was so. Oh, nice. I don't have any of those yet, by the way. They're they're too new. Where like I I'm as a builder, like I haven't gone out of my way to go get those. There's a there's a Lego Shop exclusive set that came with a bunch, and it, I lost my mind. Um, this question was so difficult, and I I was amazed at how difficult it was. <laughs> I think personally, what I would like is slopes or cheese slopes in some fashion that have studs on the slope. Ooh. Yeah. 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 That'd be interesting. Yeah. I think that would okay. Be. Yeah. Where like what? Does well, uh, where, like new bionicle where... mask count as well? Huh. That? Does the new Bionicle masks count as well? I uh, say that? Sure, I'll accept that answer. Um, yeah. New Bionicle masks. Well, yeah, but that just t- that that's a whole other tangent by itself, and that's just new. We want more construction. We want a new construction theme. Just give us more, like, Bionicle-style yeah, yeah. parts, please. <laughs> Lego, if you're listening. Sorry, I interrupted you. But, you were going to say something but, before? So, like, with, when you say the chief slope or the slopes with a stud on it, so do you mean, like, where you put it down on the Lego piece or the and then the actual stud is angled at whatever the slope is? Oh, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Yeah, they have the very old piece from, I think, eight, late 80s or mm. early, early 90s, maybe, with uh, mm. three studs long and, and the slope is five studs and it just does all the way, used on the roofs. But it's for specific. I, I have quite many of those. They are interesting. Hmm. But of okay. course, a cheese slope would be fantastic because you could angle things in very small space. Now you have okay. to use the uh, one times two brick uh, choice yeah, yeah, yeah. thing. I wish that would even exist in one times one. Yeah. But no. That'd be yeah. That'd be great if you know there was like yeah ways to angle parts within the space of like a cheese slope yeah that'd be freaking fantastic that would be insane um okay so i'm gonna give my answer now it's funny that you brought up the boat stud because like one of the parts i wish existed i wish boat studs existed in like other dimensions other than just a two by a two by two oh. like i would love to have a one by two boat stud where it's just literally i just need to join these two plates on the bottom and not have a like a, an actual full plate and i could just a one by two boat stud just, okay and then now it's sturdy and then it's not taking up a lot of space uh because there's times where i just like i need like a two a one by two boat stud right here just to keep this from falling off and um there's that uh the other one that just absolutely infuriates me that they don't they they like why why isn't lego doing this but you know with the whole uh the mixel ball joint system why aren't they building or why aren't they creating cup cup elements in different uh sizes like or, or different styles like why don't we have any technic axle yeah why don't we have a like a cup axle or a cup pen and where like the cup side of the toe ball thing it just exists in other style of parts because like okay so like the so we have to, to mix the ball with bar and uh, to, uh, not start, but a pin, a very old piece, our uh, axle, which is another very yeah, old yeah. one, used in the steering systems of Technic cars, and but the socket also exists in in uh, three pieces, which are all great. yeah, and they're all system or they're all right. system based. They're not you know like we don't have like mini ball joint systems uh, parts in like Technic. Oh, I see what you mean. Sorry. Yeah, and, and more specifically the cup. The, the actual socket part because you can use the old toe ball part for the, the ball part because they designed it to fit onto the toe ball that they have already designed. So you actually have a whole bunch of old Technic parts in the ball side but not the cup side. So it's just like, yeah. oh my god, I need something that's a cup that's not a system piece. Rah. You you uh you saying um one by two boat studs that that would also be on my <laughs> list, but I also want uh, grill tiles as a one by one instead of Ooh, just that'd be sweet. Two. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah. Or even if that was too difficult, just a one by three. Grill or yeah, tiles. just just different dimensions of grill Something tiles, like just like a two by two or yes. a you know a one by four. That'd be neat. Yeah. yeah, you could do a lot with like a one by four grill. That'd be pretty interesting. Yeah, we could we could talk about this all day. <laughs> so, okay, my next question. Do you listen to music while you mock? If so, what do you like to mock to? What what kind of music do you like to build to? Oh, music, music, music. Uh, music, it's a thing I can 
discuss with most of my friends because I listen on some very marginal Finnish bands that nobody knows in Finland. So I guess you don't know them either. <laughs> uh, I listen to music all the time. I'm a record person, so yeah. so I I listen to my CDs and LPs. I'm, I'm soon going to go through some local record stores with my father. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I, I know the feeling. I can't um, drop name names, but they mean nothing to anybody who listens to this anyway. Yeah. Well, uh, maybe okay. I sometimes listen to Black Sabbath. <laughs> you know Black yeah. Sabbath. That's that's the only name. Maybe I don't know. John's Person Blues Explosion. Probably nobody has heard about them. <laughs> Finnish band. Yeah, uh, I remember we, I've actually talked to you about music, and yeah, you sent me all this weird Finnish music, and I'm like, oh, this is neat. I've never heard listened to this stuff before, and like, like, I didn't go back to it because it was just so foreign to me, but like, it was cool hearing <laughs> just like, oh, this is what a- a- Ao likes. Cool. That's, you know, that's music I've never heard before, and it's just, it's a, like a different culture experience, and that was fun. But yeah, I remember that, you, like, uh, in conversations you and I have had, that you, you just love your, like, super obscure Finnish music. Yeah, but it's, it's very obscure in Finland. Yeah, 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 yeah. like, it's obscure even <laughs> so by it's Finland. Some Finnish country, it's some, some just weird stuff. Yeah, so, like, internationally, it's just, like, nobody's ever heard of this. Yeah, uh, I, I'm very much the same way, uh... I mean, the the stuff I listen to is definitely less obscure, and, and then there's the whole paradigm where American music is just more popular elsewhere because we're America, we just shove it everywhere, yeah, you know, yeah. it's American. It, it's in every every crown of yeah. culture. So just just our music in general is just more popular. But I listen to like a lot of like weird. It's aggressive like metal and like rock music, but it's not like it's not regular metal. It's more like lately I've been <laughs> I listened to a band called ISIS, and uh, they're not the terrorist group. Yeah, they're they're just an actual band based off the Egyptian goddess. Yes. And but they're like heavy, but they have also like really relaxing music too. And it's like this weird uh, paradox of like it's heavy, but it's also pretty chill. And it's super weird. And I don't expect a lot of people to know of stuff like that. But um, I actually try to go out of my way to like share like the music I like on uh, more specifically on DeviantArt. I'll I'll post journals or uh, statuses on DeviantArt. I'll be like, hey, this is the music I'm really li- into right now, and it's a lot of that stuff. So, I mean, you would just have to kind of go dig through that to find what I like. But I have to have music on while I mock. Otherwise, I just like the silence, just the absence of music or or sound, just eats at my brain. And I'm like, okay, I gotta. It's, it, it becomes a tangible feeling for me where I'm like, okay, there's too much quiet in here. I got to turn music on. Um, it's like walking into a stuffy room for me, almost. The feeling of silence. Um, how about you, Ben? See, I'm weird with music. I It's not that I don't listen to music, but I get tired of listening to music if I listen to it for too long. Oh, yeah, long. yeah, yeah. And I... Uh, so, okay, the music that I do listen to if I am listening to music is Ed Sheeran. Oh, okay. Uh, I have like 400 songs on my phone, but I only ever listen to you. Um, yeah, it's like me and my 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 or, iTunes. Like I have, I think I have like 35 days worth of music. Like if you actually calculated the hours, but I only listen to the same like 25, yeah. 30 bands <laughs> yeah. over and over again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that or if I want like quite neutral background music or if I'm like really thinking as I do it. Like I can't have anything on in the background if I really need yeah. to be focused and thinking. Um, but if so if I need, if I want music for when I am kind of a little more like, yeah, needing to be focused and thinking, I I actually just listen to Pokemon okay. soundtracks because that music is so like nostalgic okay. for me as well as it takes me into that world of whatever town I was in Pokemon <laughs> or whatever route it is, etc. Nice. So it's it's more of an experience than actually listening to music, which I mean, listening to music is yeah, an experience. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't, don't yeah. Uh, don't twist the words, but like, yeah, I, I'm getting more of an experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's funny. But, but you, um, one of the other types of music I listen to is I'll listen to like video game soundtracks. So I mean, Pokemon technically falls into that category. But like, I'll grab like I love the Assassin's Creed soundtracks. They're so good. like spe- especially the earlier ones, but they're all good. And that's the music I'll grab when I need to like really, really focus and just not have like words distracting me. When I like really need to go deep thinking, I go okay. Time to bust out the instrumental video game music, and then I have a playlist where it's like Assassin's Creed, Mass Effect, God of War, um, 
I added like Horizon Zero Dawn recently. I just go find video game soundtracks and then just throw it all together and just play it, and then it's pretty much all instrumental. And that's like great, great. Yeah, just yeah. like I need noise, but not be distracted by it. Noise. And, and like one of the great things about video game soundtracks is like with a movie, it scores through a moment of like, oh my god, that scary thing is happening right now. Be very afraid. Whereas video game music scores through a feeling. Like they need a like they need to set the vibe for like that level that you might be in for five minutes or you might be in for two hours you know, grinding away. Yes, so yes. it's got to be able to loop on itself. And so they score more to a feeling than an actual moment in a movie. So I, I find listening to movie soundtracks versus video game soundtracks way more distracting because, like, then I get distracted by that actual moment in the movie cause, where you remember hearing the music. And then it just yeah. completely... It becomes the exact opposite of what it was intended for. Yes, yeah. The other thing that I I mainly listen to like way more uh, and was listening to it before we got on, um, I'm more of a podcast person. Um, so if there's a Gearbox podcast out, I listen <laughs> to that. I used to listen very heavily to the Minecraft podcast. I don't anymore. Okay. Uh, I don't even know if it's still going. I haven't listened to it in ages, but I, I used to very religiously listen to that. Otherwise, the main thing I listen to is Your Realms Live. Okay. Uh, it's a D and D that isn't D and D okay. series on Bruce Willicker's channel. Okay. Uh, it's very, very funny, very entertaining. Um, it's essentially just watching a D&D game of a tabletop oh, simulator. Oh, right, right, right. I've, I've watched every campaign that they've done up to present. Um, so either I'll watch a new one or I'll rewatch older ones because they're so funny that they very much have rewatch hmm. value. Um, or I will put on a Let's Play in the background okay. sometimes. I mainly will just watch those <coughs> I am, but sometimes I can put someone in the background. Okay. See, um, to me, that kind of stuff yeah. is just distracting because, like, as I'm trying to build, I'm like, oh, what's the... Like, like I've tried listening to Gearbox podcasts while I'm mocking, and then I'm just like, oh, no, they said a thing, and then I'm like, I have a thought or a feeling about the thing that they said, and I'm like, yeah, I really agree with that, and I'm like, mm, yes, 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 mm, yes. Or, like, no, that's just stupid, you're wrong. And... I just end up being more distracted. Like, my my mental process of building gets distracted by that. So, uh, I, I have a very right. one-track mind in that regard. Like, I, I'm a terrible multitasker. So, okay, I can't cool. do, like, podcasts or audiobooks and, like, things where people are talking or or, or discussing ideas or, or conveying ideas, you know, more specifically like that because like music like I, you can listen to the same piece of music a hundred thousand times and it's still the same piece of music and then once you've you've got that familiarity with it you just know it and you, you just like the back of your mind kind of processes it for me at least and so that's why I listen right, to like yeah. the music I listen to is because it has replay value as music yeah, yeah. would you agree with that a a AO? yeah of course uh, also about uh the instrumental thing I, I listen quite a lot of instrumental rock music that is based on loops and, and playing the yeah, same yeah, yeah. Beat all over again which is fantastic uh, I, I like some stuff like that it's just flo flo um, one thing I don't think a lot of people know about me is I'm actually a musician myself uh, I play bass primarily but I can also play the drums. Uh, like I, my buddy, when I was in a band, he left his drum kit here, and I'm like, oh, well, there's a drum kit in my spare bedroom, so I guess I'll learn to play it. And then I did. Um, I also took piano back in high school, so I do know how to play piano. I'm not very good at it, but I do know how to play it. And like one of the things that's fun for me is like to bust out my effects pedal and do loops on it. Um, so lo loop loop music is pretty interesting because it's like it's almost like the 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 music form of mocking where you take a a piece in with another piece and then you layer another piece on top of that and then all of a sudden it's this idea and but it's built out of pieces of music yeah. so that's really that's really neat um this next an this next question might be really really difficult for you guys uh what is your favorite lego color dark red Sand oh, green, good. who I think is just some others too. <laughs> now I settle with dark red. Dark red and sand green. Okay, <laughs> you know what? I can, I can believe that because yeah. you use a lot of dark red in your mocks. Um, yes, I had a red red uh, <laughs> red period period of whatever time in in I think around one year ago when I had 
like I think two months of only red <laughs> Damn, that's all. <laughs> yeah, your uh, Admiral Akbar is all dark red. I I forgot about that. Um, that's a lot of dark red all crammed in there. <laughs> dark red is a great color. So um, and I yeah I see some, your dwarf here your your dwarvish rune master he's got sand green on him. So I'll yeah. uh huh interesting. Uh, how about you Ben? Now, look, I, I, I always hate favorite questions because it's one of those ones where you're like, oh, well, but that, oh, but I could also say that. And then two years, uh, like an hour later, you're like, oh, I should have said that. But, See, this is what, this is why, me, this but... is why I give you the questions beforehand, something you should try doing. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah but I would have, my answer would change, like, constantly. Because it, honestly, it like... Change. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because um, honestly, my like, whenever people are like, "What's your favorite color?" I'm like, oh, I don't know, whatever color I'm currently building with no. Lego. Um, like, it, it is always yellow. Like, yellow is probably my favorite color, but I also really like blue, and I also really like gray. So, like, I don't know. No. But in terms of my yeah, favorite, more Lego specifically, color, a Lego um, color within yes, their palette. Yes, yeah, no. Um, any, any, any mm. green. I really like sand green. I really like dark green. Um, I always like doing jungle okay. grass stuff with yeah. system. Um, so I would probably say greens, gr shades of green. The greens. Probably, probably dark green, okay. maybe. It is um, a very pretty green. I, I'm I working with it right now on yeah. Mateo. Um, That's right. Um, yeah. It is a really lovely color. Like, like I, I, I would paint my house that, like, I would paint the walls of my house that color. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It's a, that would, uh, um, good. Definitely. Okay, so just the the greens. Okay. Yes. I guess if I had to, yeah, if I had to pick them like at one specific one. Dark green. Dark so green. dark red, dark green. Okay, that makes sense. Um, for me, it's uh, we're going with another color, uh, another dark color here. My favorite hey. Lego color is dark purple. The the yeah, the right. modern the modern nice. purple. I love that color. It's my favoriteest color. Uh, I have, like, on my desk right now, I have a brickhead of Batgirl, and I have a brickhead of the Joker, and I haven't taken them apart yet because they have purple on them. I'm just like, oh, I like looking at these, so I've left them together, even <laughs> though, like, every other brickhead I have has been taken apart. Um, yeah, cool. So, my... So everybody seems to be picking two colors. Uh, for me, like, my favorite color scheme, and, like, you'll notice this because, like, a lot of my... Um, icons and stuff like this and I have actually a couple of builds but I love dark purple and lime green together cool that I, I, it's powerful. yeah it's, it's a very nice contrasty but like it's weird because it's like it contrasts each other but it also complements each other too yeah and yeah. I just I don't know why uh, I just have always liked it yeah, yeah awesome. so that I that's all my fun interesting questions I I don't have anything else to add. Is there anything else you guys would like to add to this podcast? Maybe you should have asked me that question before the podcast. <laughs> um, no, I'm good. I think. Yeah, I think it's fun. Okay, it's fun. very cool. All right. Well, I think that about does it. So this has been the 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 pilot episode of the Talking Mata Heads with Ao Okinen, uh, also known as Pate Kitangu. And Ben Kazi, also known as Ben Kazi. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah not a problem. Yeah. So, everybody have a great day, and thank you for watching. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and thank you for supporting the channel. You can also check out AO in the links, AO and Ben in the links down below. Have a great day.